This is one of the top rated baby monitors on Amazon. And this is the $9,000 monstrosity I made from the extra video equipment I had in my studio in an effort to do everything this one does, but better. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I am a Rooster Illusion. So let's start with a little disclosure. None of the gear in this video is paid product placement. I have worked with some of these brands in the past, but I wanted to challenge myself to build this rig using gear I already had with no sponsors attached. That being said, I did run into a snag with the talkback function, and so I reached out to Deity to send over some stuff to help with that. They aren't sponsoring this video, but I appreciate their equipment contribution, so shout out to them. And regarding this control baby monitor over here, also not sponsored, I bought this one from Amazon Canada based on popularity and reviews, and it cost me 269 Canadian plus tax. This video does have an actual sponsor though, and that's Storyblocks. So in a few weeks, my partner and I are expecting our first child. And in fact, shout out to the mama, Lindsay, who is operating the Zoom right now. <laughs> Having a baby on the way means that we had a bunch of baby-related paraphernalia that we needed to purchase. Now, I knew nothing about the current state of baby monitors, but when it was brought up that we needed one, my reaction was, I'll just build one. Now, this started as a bit of a joke, but eventually turned into a fun challenge. But in order to do that, I first needed to know what the capabilities of a current popular baby monitor are, which is why I have this one here. And of course, this is the one we're actually going to use because there's no way Lindsay would actually let me stick this atrocity near our baby's bassinet. So this Eufy Space View model offers 720p video system with a rated max range of 460 to 1000 feet, two-way audio functionality, a rechargeable battery, and digital zoom up to 2x. And like I said, my challenge was to build something that can do all of that, but better. So let's start by giving you a bit of a tour of the setup. Now, if you're new to this channel or if you got here by searching for baby stuff, let me just acknowledge that I realize this is completely absurd and should not be considered a viable option or a good use of money. I did this solely as a passion project because these kinds of builds entertain me and I felt compelled to share them with you. So the main camera and screen components on this combo are the Sony a7S III for the camera and the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus for the monitor. Now, both of these devices are capable of 4K, which definitely beats the 720p over here on the space view. But the transmitter that I'm using for this, which is the Axoon Cinei 2S Pro, is a 1080p max transmitter. Now you can use 4K transmitters, but they're gonna inflate the cost of this by another couple, maybe a few thousand dollars. So these I think are 650, and they transfer audio as well, which is why I thought they'd be a good pick. And I have more frame rate control as well, because I can shoot at 24, 25, 30, all the way up to 60 frames per second with this combination, where I feel like these baby monitors aren't even fully 24 or 30p. They feel a little bit more sluggish than that. Like maybe they're in like the 15 to 20 frames per second. Now when it comes to maximum rated range on the Axoons, we beat this by a little bit by getting 1200 feet. This said 460 to 1000 feet. Maybe that's based on which band it's using. What I did find is that in our home, both of these basically exceeded what we needed. So they either both get a perfect score, but on paper, this one did win by scoring 1200 feet instead of 1000 feet. Now to emulate the audio was more challenging and actually quite a bit of fun. And this is what I reached at the Deity for. So on the space view, you have it always streams audio to the monitor. So you can always hear what's going on. But if you want to talk back to the baby, there's a button you can press and then it activates the microphone on the monitor. And then you can talk through the camera in wherever the baby is. So I tried to recreate that. So on the camera itself, we've got the Rode, Video mic NTG, this is picking up audio from whatever the camera's pointed at, which would be baby sounds, let's say, and it goes into the camera and then is relayed out using the transmitter over here to the monitor. But the monitor, this one doesn't have speakers on it. So how do we hear the baby? So I've attached one of these little, these are from Amazon, they're a little portable speaker that, that just has a 3.5 millimeter plug on the one end. And I just stuck that into the headphone jack on the Ninja 5 and now we can hear what's being transmitted. But then in order to do the push to talk function, we had to put a microphone on top of the monitor, and then this is a wireless transmitter that the microphone's connected to. So we, and, and on the wireless transmitter there is a button that mutes it. So rather than push to talk, it's like push to unmute, which operates the same way. So you would push to unmute, then talk into this microphone, and then that would be transmitted back over the wireless transmitter now, instead of the video transmitter, to this wireless body pack, which also has its own 3.5 millimeter portable speaker attached to it. So when we do push to talk on the monitor, it will get transmitted through the wireless transmitter and then out through this little speaker, which is pointed 
and the same direction as the camera. So if the baby's here and it's looking at it, the voice comes out. And it all works. I wasn't expecting it to. I thought that they would interfere with each other. There'd be something wrong, but it, it all works. And I'll show you a, a practical example in a minute. But it's actually kind of, <laughs> it's kind of wild. And again, thanks to Deity for helping me plan it and figure out how we would get that to work. Okay, so here we are. I'm in another room. I've got the monitor here and I'm gonna talk into the microphone and it should be coming through in the other room on the little speaker now. And I guess the idea here would be that if you were looking at the monitor and the baby was fussing or something and you wanted to just talk to it to calm it down, you'd be like, oh, hey baby, stop kicking things or whatever babies do. I don't know what babies do. I don't have one yet, but uh, you could talk to it and then you would hopefully solve all of its problems via this handy push to talk mic configuration. Okay, okay. Check, 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 check. Okay, so here we are, I'm in the other room again. I'm using this massive camera as sort of a vlogging camera. I'm trying to hold it stable. I've got active stabilization on, which is I guess another advantage of this setup. I've got a flip out screen so I can see myself and frame myself and I have active stabilization while holding like a 10 pound camera rig here and I'm talking into the microphone on top of it. So effectively, I'm the baby now. And so out there, you can see what you would see with the monitor and you can hear me. It would come through over there. Uh, I gotta stop doing this because my arms are getting sore from <laughs> holding this up like a, like a vlogging camera. Now, another thing is that the monitor has rechargeable batteries. Now it's actually different. The, the camera over here on the space view is you got to plug it into the wall using USB. I suppose you could plug it into a USB battery bank if you wanted to and then have it on battery power. But it's usually plugged in to the wall and then this has a rechargeable battery on the screen. In my case, both the camera and the monitor are on rechargeable batteries. These are V-mount 98 watt hours, but they're also interchangeable. So if they died or if I wanted to use a bigger battery, I can take them out and sub in a larger battery or a smaller one depending on my needs, charge this one, swap them back and forth, so that's great. And I can actually operate all of the devices from that V-mount and I can even charge the other devices as well. So if I wanted to keep my Deity packs charged by just plugging them into USB-C and then plugging them into the V-mount. And if I wanted to run it on mains power, I can with these V-mount plates from Bebop, I can use their AC adapter to you know detap and then connect this and I could run the whole rig on wall power just like I can with the space view. And then lastly, to achieve the same 2x punch in digital zoom that you can do on the space view, I can do that on my monitor here with this 2x magnification button, which allows me to punch in on the image and then kind of like pan and scan around, which kind of emulates a feature that you can also do on the space view. But of course, this is much higher resolution now with a much crisper image to begin with. And didn't really talk about this, but it's kind of obvious that on the camera itself, there's a flip out screen. So I can actually see what the camera sees, whether I'm in with the baby or remotely. Not that that's a feature that anybody needs, but we've got it. So I beat the space view in every category like I set out to, except the space view has a trick up its sleeve. It has a night vision mode. My camera does not. However, I am using the Sony a7S III, which is the low light king. So let's see how well they compare in very dimly lit environments. All right, so for the low light test, I have both cameras set up over in the corner of the room, blocked off by sound blankets. So the only light that they're getting is light that's actually leaking through the blackout curtains, which you can kind of see a little bit in these shots. Also, something of note is you'll notice that the monitor over here for the custom rig is a lot wider of a shot than the Eufy, and neither one of them are punched in currently. I went with the 20 millimeter lens on the Sony a7S III because I thought that the, the baby monitor kind of looked wide angle but there is a wide angle attachment you can put on it, but right now it's just in the standard one and clearly it's a lot tighter of a shot than what the 20 millimeter looks like over here on the Sony. But anyway, I wanted to show you how the night vision works. So I've already just tweaked the Sony to have auto ISO enabled, so it's gonna change the exposure automatically and I gave it full, normally I have it limited to it can only go so high with auto ISO, but this time I let it go all the way up to like half a million ISO if it needs to. But you'll also see the night vision click in on the Eufy. Now first off right away there, when you have this low light environment, you can see there's some weird sort of color banding going on, but let's turn off the, the light to make it even darker over there. And you can see, I heard a sound and you can see all of a sudden it clicked in. So I'll do it one more time. When I turn the light off, watch it sort of flash in a night vision mode. There, it clicked and then it goes into night vision where the Sony just sort of seamlessly ramps up the ISO. So if I turn the light back on, it's too overexposed and just brings the exposure down. 
this one kind of flutters with it. And it also goes to show that frame rate thing I was talking about. When I try and pan the camera over here, watch how sort of uh, slow and choppy it is. So if I pan, see that it kind of smears the image? And it can actually be kind of difficult to pan it exactly. <laughs> I overshoot all the time trying to get it to pan exactly where I want. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how the a7S III is performing. I don't know how it's pulling so much light out of the window, but it's also balancing the exposure nicely, where the space view is kind of blown out from the light it's pulling from the window and then streaking weird colors across the frame. And if we actually introduce color how it's supposed to look, I'll turn on my backlights again. So obviously when I turn on the purple and orange lights, we get purple and orange in the shot on the Sony, but the space view is still sort of a monochromatic look because of the night vision. And lastly, here's a comparison to demonstrate a more realistic combination of camera settings, because I don't think you can expect to get the same low light performance if you're using something other than the a7S III and a fast lens like I was. So this is using a more modest aperture on your lens and letting the ISO only go to 12,800. As you can see, it's not near as visible as when you let the ISO go to 200,000 or whatever we can do on the a7S III and shooting at f1.8. You can barely see what's going on in the image. And in this case, the space view takes a clear win. So maybe you spent $9,000 on a baby monitor, but you still can't really see your baby in the dark. That's okay. You can always look at stock footage of someone else's baby instead using the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. So sometimes you don't have the shot you need and there's no way you're gonna be able to go out and get it before you run out of time, run out of money, or run out of patience by completely derailing your creative momentum. And that's where Storyblocks comes in. They've got subscriptions for every budget that give you access to a vast, royalty-free library with unlimited downloads, allowing you to use the footage worry-free for both personal and commercial projects. They're also focused on enriching their catalog with diverse and inclusive content to provide useful assets for creatives of varying needs and audiences. And this is all easily accessed using their intuitive interface with filters for 4K video at multiple frame rates, along with backgrounds and After Effects templates. If you've never browsed Storyblocks before, I think you'll be truly impressed by just how exhausted the library is, and I encourage you to learn more about them by using the link in the description below. Okay, just for fun, let's talk about dynamic range. This is obviously a janky setup. I got both cameras over there pointed at the Xyla 21. You're not supposed to do two cameras at the same time. You're not supposed to have them slightly off frame. It doesn't matter though. I can't actually record internally in the space view. So this is another advantage for the custom rig is I can record either to this Ninja, like what it's receiving, or I could record over there on the camera if I wanted to, or do both at the same time. So I could actually record my dynamic range results on the Sony, run them through Imatest and get a score for you. I can't really do that with the space view. So instead we'll just do a visual comparison, even though this probably isn't worth anything. So let me turn the lights off and you'll see right away that the space view over here has an auto exposure. So if I turn the light back on, the night vision mode isn't working anymore, I turned it off. But see there's kind of this like really drastic auto exposure that completely blows out the highlights when it's in a low light situation. You can see quite a bit into the shadows, which I guess is handy, but your highlights are completely nuclear from the top like five or six stops. We're over here on the Sony, we're getting a much better gradation and I believe we can even see further into the shadows and it's much smoother. Okay, now let's check the color accuracy. Okay, so now we got the color chart set up over there and I think the differences are quite apparent. The Sony looks pretty color accurate and good, and the space view is, well, it's doing what it can. But there's, you can see how some of the white chips are overexposed. Some of the blues and purples are just smearing together. It has reasonable color separation, but if for some reason you needed to really identify the different hues in your baby's room, then the custom rig definitely wins in this case. And when it comes to detail, the Sony wins as well, but let's do a 2x punch in on both and compare the finer qualities. So as you can see, the 1080p 60 signal coming from the Sony and viewed on the Ninja 4K panel looks much better than this 720p 15 on whatever resolution. I assume the panel is also 720p resolution to save money, but you can clearly see some pretty big differences there. The screen quality on the space view isn't quite as good as well. You can see this kind of smeary pattern on it when viewed from many different angles where the viewing angles are better on the Ninja. So obviously this contraption outperforms the Eufy in those areas, and I would sure hope so, but there's also some room for upgrades. For example, this space view can pan remotely if it's something you need as the child gets older. I suppose we could rig this custom one up to a gimbal or a Moco device to provide similar functionality. And what about using those new power zoom lenses from Sony? You can control them wirelessly from either their commander remote or the phone app. I'm envisioning a 16 to 35 power zoom lens controlled by a phone 
which also doubles as the monitor. Or just Velcro the commander remote to the side of a rig similar to this. Or if you wanna get real fancy, I have a challenge for Josh from MakeArt now. Why don't you hook up a camera to the new DJI gimbal, use the focus motor on the zoom ring of the lens and control it all using the new transmission system from DJI. Then you'd have video, camera movement, and zoom all in one wireless package. But that's for another video. I'm personally satisfied with how mine turned out, but I'm happy to pass the baton to the other video gear nerd fathers out there that want to pick up where I left off. Yeah, all right. I'm done.